Rahu in the eighth house. This is one of the most enigmatic of Rahu placements. Because Rahu in the eighth house is very deeply connected with the occult. It's very deeply connected with the underworld. It's deeply connected with all kinds of paranormal phenomena. All kinds of occult phenomenon, but also all kinds of uh, spiritual phenomenon. Because the eighth house is part of the moksha triangle. The four, eight and twelve houses form the moksha triangle. These houses are responsible for the spiritual development or they indicate the things that you need to tap into, that you need to address in order to achieve a high level of spiritual development. So 8th house is also your Kundalini energy, 8th house is also your personal power. When you have Rahu in the 8th house, <laughs> Quite often, this is not an easy placement to deal with because Rahu in the 8th house can give you a lot of problems with relationships. He can give you a lot of problems um, with respect to um, the materialization of benefits in relationships. Rahu in the 8th house can often give you failed marriages, failed relationships or just marriages and relationships where there is a lot of karma attached with uh, your in-laws, lot of karma attached with creating a legacy with your partner. Rahu in the 8th house is a great placement for research. Research is also seen from the 8th house. But in some way or other, since the 8th house is second from the 7th, relationships are going to form a huge basis for your understanding of the good and bad parts of life okay a lot of people think that with Rahu in the seventh house that is the case that relationships are going to form a huge part of your learning about life but their relationships are a part of that axis are a part of that placement the main thing the keyword over there is balance learning to find balance over here it is about your personal power How much you think you are capable of doing that which you wish to do, that which you wish to manifest in this world. Now, so what happens is that you Ketu in the second, you will start life with a natural tendency of wanting to keep things safe, wanting to be on the safe side of things, being very safety oriented because Ketu's place in the second house. The second house is the house of Taurus, the natural house of safety, stability financial assets, immovable assets, family of birth, values. You will start your life out like that. But it is only with time that you realize that, man, this just does not give me the kind of satisfaction that I want. Why am I not fulfilled? I have 10 lakh rupees in the bank. I'm not fulfilled. That's because whenever you have Ketu in a placement, you can never find fulfillment with that area. You have to go towards Rahu. So if you have a lot of money in your bank, if you have a lot of financial assets and you're not happy with life, that means you need to begin taking some risks. It's by taking risks that you're going to grow. It's by taking risks that you're going to be able to create something that will help you build a legacy because eighth house is also the house of death and rebirth. So it is also connected with our death and our life after death, which is what? In the form of our legacy. Albert Einstein had this placement, I'm pretty sure. And if you study about Albert Einstein, you will see that his first wife was instrumental in a lot of his research. She was also a scientist along with him, but at that time, you know, women didn't really have a lot of. Uh, freedom in terms of taking up science, excelling in science and, you know, uh, being accepted into scientific circles of research. So it is said 
and this correspondence between Einstein and his wife has been uncovered through their letters, it is said that she was a very important part in Einstein making all the discoveries that he did make. I think he got a Nobel Prize for Brownian motion, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, probably he discovered that, but you know, he, uh, he discovered a bunch of things, by the way, relativity, I think, uh, photovoltaics, uh, Brownian motion, you know, bunch of things that he discovered, but his wife was very important in that process of him working out the mathematics behind these things in the initial stages of his life. Now, when they did have a divorce, finally, it was an ugly divorce. There was a lot of resentment, there was a lot of sadness, a lot of controversy surrounding it. But then Einstein found stability through his second marriage. Because somewhere Einstein was not, uh, he, was, he was not very confident about the marriage aspect working out with his first uh, wife. Sure, there was an intellectual connect, but there was not enough stability. Stability is going to be, therefore, a huge aspect that you're going to encounter with displacement because your natural instinct is to be stable. But in this lifetime, your soul is here to experience how to take risks. Your soul is here to experience how to tap into your personal power, to fight adverse circumstances, how to become brave, how to take challenges head on. How to work not just with your resources, but with other people's resources. So this can be a great placement for somebody who works in finance, uh, an investment banker, even an entrepreneur, a businessman. I think Shah Rukh Khan also has this placement. And if you look at Shah Rukh's life, I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, there's a very minor chance that I may be wrong, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that he does have this placement too. Because it makes sense too. If you look at Shah Rukh Khan, if you... Um, you know, listen to what he says about his life. His entire life has been based, the, the foundations of his life lie in the close relationships that he's formed with producers, with directors, with his own wife. I mean, he even owns, uh, I think he's the only actor who owns an IPL franchise, who owns a sporting franchise, cricketing sporting franchise. And he uh, owns that in partnership with Juhi Jawla, who he has a great relationship with. They also have a company together, I think, uh, Red Chili's Entertainment. So this placement can give you a lot of passion. You can be very passionate with this placement. Because the, because the sign of Scorpio, the eighth house, has everything to do with sex. It has everything to do with passion. It has everything to do with uh, desire. Deep emotion. That's what the sign of Scorpio in the 8th house says. But here's where people start encountering a lot of difficulties during Rahu Mahadasha. Rahu Mahadasha comes along. It creates tons of havoc in your life. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to navigate it. What you need to do is you need to understand something which is going to hold you in good stead throughout your life if you have displacement. If you have Rahu in the 8th house, to be successful, to be happy, to be fulfilled, you need to transform yourself continuously. You need to keep adding skills. I mean, take the example of Shah Rukh Khan himself. After a while, his movies just stopped doing well. People were sick of his lover boy image. Why has Pathan been such a great success? His latest movie. Why has it been such a great success? Because he's completely reinvented himself. So you have to reinvent yourself if you have this placement. And you also have to learn to take risks, to go deep down into your personal power, to do the things that you really desire. Another thing here, if you have the North Node placed in the 8th house, is that the 8th house can give you quite a bit of interest in the occult. Quite a bit of interest in exploring the unseen side of life. 
so you would be advised to practice things like kriya yoga kundalini yoga mantra jap mantra sadhana these can be very beneficial for you study learn research read the scriptures they're going to be very helpful for you displacement can also you know uh, cause a lot of havoc in your life in terms of surgeries accidents etc but i don't want to you know uh, scare you with the negative connotations of displacement i just want to tell you that the negative placements arise most of the time when you're not listening to rahu if you're listening to rahu then these placements are to a huge extent negative quite often people are afraid as they're told that since rahu is in the 8th house you're not going to get your inheritance or you're going to have to get you're going to be encountering a lot of problems in getting your inheritance that's not because rahu is in the 8th house that's because ketu is in the 2nd the second house is the house of your family of birth when you have ketu there what that essentially means is your benefits from your family of birth are going to be denied to you you're not supposed to get it obviously later in, later on in life after the age of 48 when ketu matures you might well have it but in this lifetime you here to create your own legacy you're here to create your own uh, inheritance ketu in the second ketu in any placement is going to give you what you do thing is the key is here to not think about those things to not think about inheritance to not think about taking benefits from your family of birth you have to go out and make relationships partnerships with your spouse's side of the family with your spouse with new people get more people on board if you have a company that is struggling and you're in rahu mahadasha or you have this placement expand the ownership of the company reduce your share get more people in okay there is no logic having owning a lot of little instead even if you own a little of a lot it's going to be a lot let that sink in okay so if you enjoy this video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel so that uh you can stay abreast of all the wonderful content that i post here push the bell icon so that you'll be notified every single time i post uh, thank you so much take care how are you